let's talk about parental responsibility. So many of these shootings are directly related to parents looking the other way. These violent acts that are occurring are a perfect example of parental abdication. Buck, I was saying, I kind of dove into uh, to this shooter, this 18-year-old. And while everybody's talking a lot about the blame, uh, and the blame seems to be almost entirely trying to be foisted upon the Republican Party and uh, to, uh, to Fox News and probably this radio program and all these other different places, can we talk some for just a sec about parental responsibility? If your 18-year-old has severe mental health issues such that he is decapitating the family cat. You need to be paying incredible attention to what your kid is doing. And I say that as the father of three boys, I try to get my son's phone and go through and look at the places that he is visiting online. And he may be smarter than me and be able to hide it. But this kid wrote a how many hundred page manifesto? On a computer, hundreds of pages. Yeah. 180 pages. You are a parent and your psychologically unstable kid who's decapitating the cat is on the internet writing a 180 page manifesto and you know nothing about it. You know nothing about the choices that he's making. And by the way, he ended up acting out against all these innocent people in Buffalo but he could have been acting out against your own family. So how in the world, if you want to talk about, let's talk about parental responsibility. So many of these shootings are directly related to parents looking the other way. These violent acts that are occurring are a perfect example of parental abdication. And this kid had all sorts of mental health issues. And in reading, it appears that both of his parents are civil engineers. So they certainly had the resources to be able to, 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 to take care of this kid in some way. And instead, they're letting him spend all of his time on the cesspool of the internet, polluting what was already a broken mind to the point where he gets here. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I don't hear hardly anybody discuss He also, in the manifesto, says that he radicalized, he self-radicalized during the COVID lockdown. And, and there's, yes, a, there's another, an there's, a, part of this there's a part of this. And by the way, I, I, what I'm not doing is saying this guy did this thing because of COVID lockdowns. What I am saying is the amount of mass psychological damage that was done to society, but specifically to young people from these completely inhumane, unnecessary, lockdown, school closures, and all the rest, that hurt tens of millions of people. And in yeah. the outlier case of somebody who's already clearly, you know, has a severe mental health issue, right? I mean, they're not talking about, this is the, we don't even have great terminology. Psychopathy is what any psychologist would tell you. Uh, inability to, to feel for the pain of other people, to care about the pain of other people. This kid's clearly a true psychopath. Uh, no one, you know, when you say mental health issues, it could be somebody who has a little bit of anxiety, right? This is a severe yeah, right. mental health issue this kid has. But there was a lot of damage done all across society to a lot of people's mental health. And in this case, you had somebody where there was already that combustible mix of he he's a psychopath. And now he's set at a set sitting at home all day and just self-radicalizing even further. And I would just say to parents out there, and I know, look, a lot of kids are smarter about using the internet and technology than parents are. But we have, for instance, a computer that the kid has to use in a public venue, right? In the house where anybody could walk by at any point in time. And I'm not saying my kids are perfect by any stretch of the imagination. That's why we have the computers out in the public here. You got to know where your kids are going online. Right. Because especially if your kid has severe mental health issues, which this kid did and is even more susceptible to the dark forces, I would say, of the Internet that could help to enable and encourage him to make this choice. And if he's behaving violently like this, 
Maybe don't allow him to have easy access to weapons either if he's living inside of your home. Because if he's willing to do this to someone at a Buffalo grocery store, it could have easily been your own family, right? I mean, I just, if you want to talk, the ki- everybody who is 18 or older is ultimately responsible for their own actions. That's point number one. But if you want to say as part of point number two, what else was at play for an 18-year-old who was living at home, I just, instead of focusing on Fox News and the media environment and the internet, how about we talk about these parents who failed on such an epic level that they allowed their kid to descend to this level of violence and were not able to remotely stop it, despite the fact that based on being civil engineers, Buck, they have to have some resources. It's not as if they are, this kid was living in a, in a no parent household with nobody else around. He's got, he was taken to the emergency room for a psych, a psych evaluation when he said he wanted to be a mass shooter. And so that also raises, I mean, you're talking about parental responsibility. What about that came from the school, right? Didn't the school turn him in? Well, what about the responsibility of the state here? I mean, you're talking about, if we're going to discuss prevention, or, or at least limiting the chances that something like this could happen again in the future, uh, any kind of mass shooting in the future, you would want to look at there were red flags, people saw them, there yep. was action taken, it wasn't enough. Well, what does that mean we should do going forward? And then you have conversations about involuntary commitment for psychiatric reasons. Now, those are, those are also Tough thorny positions, discussions. But yes. But... That's an actual banning AR-15s in a handful of states going into a midterm election. That's not going to do anything. So Democrats are going to just return to the same talking points as they always do.